Good morning, folks. You're watching China's Moon Probe. Successful liftoff and sequence so far. It's on its way up to map the full surface of the moon on a whole new level. Water decontamination at Fukushima, coming under fire as about a liter of HCL used to neutralize the alkalized water, has leaked from the system. Great shots here from NASA's Earth Observatory. We're at the Kamchatka Peninsula for yet another volcano active in the thin eastern sliver of Russia. Super Earths, ever better understood and now ever more easily found. It goes double for potentially habitable ones. Giant red stars have cooler surfaces but expel light over bigger areas. Super Earths would need to be closer to those stars to be considered habitable. That also makes them potentially more visible for passes in front of the star. Ergo, we'll find more potentially habitable Super Earths around those stars much faster than expected. Coming down to Antarctica, a helicopter crash is seeing some very lucky folks. It was a dual chopper flight and the other one's down aiding the injured, while assistance makes the long, long trek to save them all. Slightly north of that, we've set our eyes here more than I'd ever expect to the last 30 days, and it's just happened again. Another severe hailstorm in the southern part of Africa. Torrential rainfall continuing in certain parts of the Amazon as well, not that these folks aren't used to it. Solar flaring? Need I even say it? We've got nothing. Nothing but some underperforming sunspots facing Earth. At least now we don't have silent delta spots. The umbras are magnetically separated, so it's just the size that's surprising us. We'll also keep an eye on the incomer down south. Let's look at three days of solar wind showing weakening metrics and instability. Nice, smooth, calm, regaining on the sensitive meters. We are awaiting a tiny CME today, and another was just sent on its way. The CME is not resulting from a big flare, it was a surface and filamentary instability. It's small, and it will likely deliver a glancing blow to Earth's magnetic shield on Tuesday night or Wednesday morning, impacting with low to medium density and medium speed as the fastest particles likely went north. You also know we have the incoming corona hole that started the quake watch as we saw yesterday, but these require no blocking fields. The umbral and coronal magnetics had been open to Earth directly from that coronal hole, but it snapped shut yesterday, blocking the majority of force and all the bigger quakes. The field is just starting to reopen again now, and the quakes are slowly coming back, with a well-downgraded West Pacific rumble just a few hours ago, went up into 6 range on multiple readers. We're also seeing an unusual location uptick signal in the Dominican Republic. For fun, you know I check for quarry blasts sometimes too. The little diamonds caught one up near the border. If you're not yet a website member, Starwater Coupon reactivated now through the end of the year. It takes 20 bucks a year down to 12 or just $1 a month. Just use the code STARWATER when you're signing up. I'll leave you with Mr. Too Tough 2 in the Yelverton Lab in Albany, Georgia. We've been recreating a lot of very cool electric experiments and as you know, we share them from time to time. You may have seen something like this before, but either way, makes for great discussion. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.